Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video. No one. The completely fictional company that does absolutely nothing. More about them in the video. Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about churn. Churn is a term used by industries to describe loss of clients or customers. Churn can be a significant problem especially for companies where customers have a lot of options. Things like telecommunication, cable, live streaming, etc. Companies in these specific industries or these fields invest heavily in acquiring customers. Hence, reducing the amount of churn is very significant for the company itself. In data science, there's something called churn prediction. Churn prediction is a process by companies that tries to know which customers have the highest risk of leaving the organization so that they can take proactive measures to try and retain these customers. In today's video, we're going to create a churn prediction model using a telecommunication data set that I got from Cargo. I will put a link in the description so that you can follow along with this data, download it and follow along with me. With this data, once you get it from the link that I'll provide, we'll do a couple of things. We'll clean it, however, Cargo data is usually clean, so we'll do a little bit of maybe very little cleaning, then we'll do some exploratory data analysis, then we'll embark on creating a churn prediction model using various algorithms, various classification algorithms like logistic regression, random forest classifier, support vector classifier, etc. etc. Once we do this, we'll try and see which of these models had the best accuracy, precision, F1 score and recall so that we know which algorithm to specifically use. Feel free to add more details to this, feel free to do some feature engineering, feel free to do anything with this code to try and modify the results to become a little bit better. So we'll start by opening up a Jupyter Notebook file and make sure that it's in the same directory as the telecommunication.csv file that we'll have that you can download. You can put it anywhere else and follow the path, but I like putting them in the same place so that there's no problem in trying to follow a specific path. I can just call the data out directly. So you open your Jupyter Notebook, initiate the server and start your Jupyter Notebook. I have already done that. And what I'll do, I'll just create a new Python file here. And this Python file I have, it will be in the same directory as the telecom data.csv file that I have. So you open this up. Remember, I have renamed mine to telecom telecommunication data. Once you download it, it will not be that name. So you make sure you rename it accordingly or when you're using pd.read, you make sure you use the correct name. The first things I need to do, I'll do it really quickly, is make some importations. These importations will involve taking the pandas numpy, matplotlib, seaborn and plotly and making sure I import this. After importing this, I'll make sure that I read this data. I will read it using the pandas method read.csv and using this I can just read it and we can look at df.head and see what it has. We can see all that it has. It has customer ID, the gender, if he's a senior citizen or not, if he's a partner, if he has dependents, if uh, the tenure, which is basically how many months he has been with this specific telecommunication company, etc, etc. When you look at the last row here, this is what we will be trying to predict. The last column, sorry, this is what we'll be trying to predict. So we can do a little bit of checking where we can look at the info. When we look at the info, we can see all these and we can see most of these are objects and some little bit of int here and a float here. Remember, total charges should be, I want to look at total charges here. You can see it is in float form, but it's written object. And this is something that will make sure we change since it will affect our machine learning model that we'll try to create. Great. The next thing that we need to do, we can just check the shape. When you look at the shape, you can see how many we have. 7,000 of them against 21 columns. And also we can do something else where you can just describe this and we can see the mean, etc., of the numerical data points. Remember, total charges should have been here, but it has a problem, something that will fix once we get to creating the machine learning models. 
Great. We can also look if we have any null values for any of this and we can find out that we don't have any null values and we can also we can also try to see how many unique values we have for each and every one of these specific columns. So we'll just take all the columns and these columns what we want to do is create a for loop that will look at the unique values and how many unique values for each and every one of these that we have. Our for loop will look something very simple where it will check for i in the in these columns it will print that specific and then look at the unique values and the n unique values you can run this and we can see how many unique values we have for this and you can see most of them are three however there's something we need to do here because no phone service and no means the same thing unlike this no internet service so we'll have to change this no phone service to no so that you can continue just a little bit of something that we will be doing and we'll do that simply by just we can create a, a big for loop for everything and try and change from no phone service to no for any column that has that. So we can just make sure we use all the columns that we have and using all these columns, we can come and create a for loop where it will check for no phone service and then convert it or replace the no phone service to, to that. And when we run this and look now at df.head, we can see that this which had no phone service when you look up here. When you look at here, you can see no phone service, no phone service, but now all have been converted. No, something else that we will do is check on some correlation. And when you check on this correlation, you can see how the correlation is. You can create a heat map from this by just simply using the heat map from Seaborn and creating, using the Seaborn from Seaborn and just creating a heat map that we can see that looks like this and you can see that the highest correlation is between how many how many months a person has been there and how much monthly charges they pay great we can now proceed to looking at a little bit of eda by visualizing the data and we can see do something like checking on the senior citizens and seeing their distribution or the account plot against and senior citizens or you know, the other citizens. You can see the senior citizens are very few uh, compared to the other ones on a ratio of about six to one. Something else we can just check is looking at how, uh, how long a person stays against the monthly charges with a hue of internet services. We do this by simply checking on that, just creating the plot, making it a little bit bigger, and then creating a scatter plot with X being a tenure, and Y being the monthly charges and using the hue as the internet service. So when you run this, you can see the internet service that uses fiber optic, the people of fiber optic peak, the people of fiber optic are the ones who spend most of the money on monthly charges on monthly charges compared to DSL and no. This EDA is just to help you understand how these things work. And then now we can use the PyPlot Express to look at a histogram, trying to check on the difference of the monthly charges to churn or hue it with churn and see how it looks and when we run this we can see that it is more or less distributed the same uh, that uh, the, the monthly charges around 670 to 100 have the highest count of churn but no problem we, we will see this more when we create the machine learning models. We can also create a box plot. Something that I think is important is creating a box plot to see if the payment method, the payment methods that we have, which are the electronic checks and the ma mail checks and the bank transfer and the credit card, which one of these have the highest uh, churn using the box plot. And we can simply do this by just creating a box plot real quick. And when we look at this box plot, you can see that more or less using the Plotly Express, more or less the median is the same being 79 and 81 for the electronic mail, but it's very different here where it's 25 and 53, more than double, and uh, 69 and 82, 69 and 80. We can see for the mail check, the people who are using mail check don't churn as much. We can see people who use the mail check, the more they spend on the monthly charges, the higher the churn. And this is just a little bit of EDA to understand what the data says.
I will not concentrate too much on the LA. I will not concentrate too much on the exploratory data analysis. You can go forth and try and see how the churn has a relationship with each and every one of these columns and perform a better EDA than what I am doing. But I want to concentrate more on using this specific data to create a churn prediction model. And that's what we're going to do right now. So what you're going to do right now, let's just check on the data frame again. Let's check on the head and look at a couple of things. One of the things that you see is this customer ID. The customer ID is relatively useless to us, so we don't quite need it anyhow. So the first thing you need to do is just get rid of this customer ID. And we do this by just dropping it. Can you df dot drop? And then we just drop this customer ID very simply. And by doing this, we drop the customer ID. However, we need to do in place or replace the data frame and be, let it be equal to that. And now when we look at data frame dot head, we'll notice that there is no customer ID. Something else worth knowing is when you look at this data, you can see yes, no questions. The, uh, the internet service is also a categorical data point. Most of these are categorical data points. And using categorical data points in machine learning and using the categorical data points in machine learning will not work if they stay in word form or in string form. So what we need to do is convert them to numerical values by either using, uh, giving, assigning them values, one, two, three, etc., or using dummy variables, uh, which using dummy variables, which is basically one hot encoding. The difference between one hot encoding and uh, just assigning them values is that if you have, for example, the payment method, we have a credit card, bank transfer mail, and electronic check. If we use the assigning of values will have let's say electronic check as one mail check as two bank transfer as three and credit card as four this will not work properly because this will make our machine learning algorithm assume that these are levels meaning one is greater than two uh, two is greater than one three is greater than two four is greater than three and it will act as if it's categorical something like very good to very bad yet this specific payment methods don't have a specific hierarchy. So that's why we use one hot encoding, where we'll have create new columns, where we'll have electronic check being zero or one, and then mail check being zero or one, creating new columns for all of this. We'll have to drop one of them because of multicollinearity. You can investigate that on your own, but multicollinearity appears when, if you have a value that is yes and no, or gender, male and female, you can have male being zero or one and then female being zero or one, but they will be perfect predictors of the of male will be a perfect predictor of female. And this will mess with some algorithms like logic seek regression, etc. So we'll drop first. So we'll remain with male. So if it's male, it's one. If it's not male, it's zero. Or if it's female, it's zero. Meaning if we have just one column of male, we'll know if a person is a male or a female rather than having both of them, which will mess due to multi-collinearity. So what we want to do, we want to create dummy variables. And we create dummy variables for only the data which is in string form. What do I mean? We'll not try to create dummy variables for monthly charges, total charges, or anything that is in numerical form. This will bring a lot of problems. So what we'll do, we first of all take all of them that don't have those and just take them using this we'll do we'll create a new data frame we'll call it encoded data frame and then we'll use pd.get dummies using pd.get dummies it will create dummy variables for each one of them meaning if you have gender it will have gender male and gender female and check if gender is male it will be zero and if gender is female it will be if gender if in gender male in gender male, if the male, if it's a male, it will have one, and if it's a female, it will have zero. But it will also create gender female. So if if it's a female, it will be one, and if it's not a female, it will be zero. That's why we have to use this drop first. 
this drop first will drop one of them rather than having all of them creating the problem that I just stated, which is multicollinearity. So we'll once we have this, we, we as you can see there is no monthly charges and there's no total charges because these are numerical data points and they are not helpful in creating this. So when we run this and just check on the encoded data encoded data frame dot head, you'll notice that we have change this into zeros and ones and we have only remained with one of them you can see streaming movies no internet service streaming movies yes streaming movies yes we can see that we don't have uh, for gender we have only male there's no gender female because we used this drop first great remember that we don't have in the encoded data frame we don't have the data which was in numerical form and this data in numerical form was the monthly charges and the total charges so using this we'll just come and create a new data frame which we'll call, just call it in the integer data frames or the float data frames will be which will use the monthly charges and the total charges and uh, when we run this and then you just look at, at that you'll notice it's that perfect now what you want to do is combine these two data frames to form one complete data frame that will be used in now what you want to do is combine the in that integer with the float data frame with the encoded data frame to form one big data frame that will be used in creating the machine learning models so what you'll do is just call it final and we'll use concant what we'll do is just call it final and use concant to join them together Something worth noting is that the axis will have to be one. Something worth noting is that the axis will have to be one so that it joins them together. If you don't have one, it will try and join them uh, in a different way and it will create a lot of null values. So when we run this and then look at data frame final and just like, just like look at the head, you can see now we have a complete data frame with all of the data that we need including the one that we're trying to predict which has not been changed to chan yes so if it if it's chan yes one if it's one it means it the person chan if it's zero it means they did not chan perfect now what we want to do now what we want to do is look at the info for data data frame the final data frame that is going to be used to create the machine learning models when you look at data frame final you'll notice sorry dot info you'll notice that the monthly charges is a float but the total charges is not a float this is because there are some values. If you just come and just have data frame final and then have data frame final and check on the total charges where the total charges is just a blank space and run this, you can see these total charges is a blank space in most of them. This is because uh, not all the people you can see that the total charges are, is empty here it's a blank space which is not what we want so what we want to do is replace these total charges
Now, as you have seen the total charges are blank spaces and what you want to do now is fill these blank spaces with the monthly charges multiplied by the tenure. Now that you have seen most of them are zero, now that you have seen there are some which have spaces, this, since you want to convert the total charges, as we have seen here, it's an object you want to convert it into a float, these blank spaces will be a problem because if it tries to con convert a blank space into an integer, it will say cannot convert a and a string into a float. So if you try to convert these blank spaces into floats, it will say you cannot convert string into float. So what you want to do is replace them with zero. As you can see, most of them are the churn is yes, so they don't have total charges because they already churned out. So what you want to do is replace it with zero. And what you want to do is use a simple if statement here and using this we can just replace it with zero and when we look at now df df final and run it we can see or when we run this now it will have zero rows perfect now after doing this if we check on info still it will still not be good because it's still an ob it's still object. We want it to be a float. What do we want it to be a float? Because our machine learning model creation cannot work with things that are not in number form. So floats, uh, integers, this u int meaning it's zero or one, etc., etc. So what you want to do is convert this into a float. It is a very simple process. Once we have created this, the other ones to zero, it becomes very easy because if you try to do this and convert the total charges as type to float, if we had empty spaces, it could not have worked, but now it works. Okay, there's a problem here. Oops, cannot convert string to float. And this is the problem that I was talking about. Run this first, run this, and then
and then now we'll work this now it will convert it into a float and if you just come and look at df final again dot info you can see it has now sorry sorry i made a mistake i converted df so this should be final and then this should be final and then this should be final too and then run this and then now come convert this final because this is what we're going to use final run this and when you run this again you can see the total charges have been converted to a float this is uh, very good and it's this data frame when you look at it this is what will be used dot head it's all it's all in numerical form and this is what we'll use to create our machine learning algorithms our machine learning models now what you want to do is do the train test split we use uh, just use um, the model selection from circuit learn to do the train test split and we'll just have x and y This will be Chan yes as our Y and everything apart from Chan X, Chan yes as our X. Very quickly come here and use this. Very quickly just come perform the train test split. I think I can do it at 30%. And uh, something else we need to do is use mean scalar. So mean scalar is used in machine learning to scale the feature values in a specific range. Using the mean max scalar. The next thing we need to do is use the mean max scalar. The mean max scalar is used in machine learning just to scale the data into a range of 0 and 1. Once it scales these feature values to a range of 0 and 1, it really helps to boost the machine learning model accuracy, the machine learning performance, the machine learning model performance. Since it reduces uh, the data into having a similar range from 0 and 1, reducing all the large discrepancies, etc. Because some machine learning algorithms like logistic regression and uh, k nearest neighbors have a problem working with data that is not up to a certain scale so that's why we have to use the mean max scalar how the mean max scalar works you just have to import it from sklearn preprocessing very quickly and run this and then we have to instantiate the the instance of this mean max scalar After instantiating this, we can now try and fit our X train X test into we try to fit our X train and X test to this specific scale. And this scale so it we fit the x train and the x test to this and then create data frames from that the next thing we need to do is just create a dictionary and then a data frame that will hold the performance metrics 
What do I mean by this? We'll just have a, data, a dictionary here. We'll call it result. And it will have the model, its accuracy, its recall, precision, and F1 score. And then we'll just create a data frame from this. And if we just check on the data frame itself, the head you can see it's an empty data frame that has this. This will be fitted. This will be fitted later on to show us how each model works. So, with, so for this specific task, we'll use various. So for this specific task, we. So for this specific task, we create various models. We use various algorithms to create various models. Then we'll test and see which one has the highest accuracy, precision, F1 score, and recall. For this, we'll use linear regret. For this, we'll use logistic regression, random forest classifier, decision tree, and a random. So for this, we'll use a decision tree, a random forest classifier, which is basically an ensemble of decision trees, a support vector classifier, so we use a support vector machine to classify this data. We'll also use a logistic regression and also use the K nearest neighbor classifier. Great. So what we'll first do is go to sklearn and import all of these specific algorithms, all these specific classifiers. Perfect. So we have imported all of these classifiers and now what we want to do is instantiate each and every one of them. So we instantiate them and have instances for each and every one of them and we'll use five nearest neighbors here and we run this. Now we have instantiated each and every one of these specific instances for the support vector classifier, logistic regression, random forest classifier, decision tree and k nearest neighbor classifier. Now what we want to do is now do the fitting and do the predictions and see our confusion metrics and our performance metrics out. Now what we want to do Now what we want to do is to fit our training training data and try to predict our tests. Then check on the confusion metrics and classification report trying to see the accuracy, precision, F1 score, and recall for each and every one of these. Something else that we'll add is a way of checking which of these has the highest precision, has the highest accuracy, etc, etc, inside this ensemble of models that we have created. The first thing we need to do is to create Is to create a data frame that will hold the first thing you need to do is to create this data frame that will hold all of this information great the next thing we need to do is to create a list of all these instances of the models remember how we named them here so we'll just have model equal to all these models in a list 
After that, now we need to create a for loop. A for loop that will do the training and then uh, we'll do the fitting of the training data and do the predictions and then print out this confusion matrix and the classification report. We create a for loop for all the models in this model and in, inside this for loop will fit the training data. After fitting this training data, we'll make predictions on the test data. So we just fit this, we'll just fit this and then create this new variable ypred which will just be a prediction using the this mod all these models to try and predict the y test from the x test using all these models the next thing we need to do is create a, a couple of print for prints that will help us understand this a little bit i'll do this real quick So I will add a print here. This print will print the model and then have a line so that you can try and distinguish between these models, etc. The next thing I need to do is bring in the confusion matrix and the classification report. I will from the met the next thing I need to do is import from the matrix the classification report, the confusion matrix, the precision, recall, f1 score, and accuracy. I'll do that also very quickly. Using these three, what I want to do now is print out the confusion matrix, the classification report, and the accuracy recall F1 score and precision score for each and every one of these models. Remember, this for loop will come and take this linear logistic regression, undergo this whole process, give us its confusion matrix, classification report, accuracy, etc. Then go to the next one, decision. Uh, the DC which was our decision tree classifier etc etc up to the end so now I want to print out the results what I want to print out is the confusion matrix and then the confusion matrix will be the confusion matrix which will compare the y test to the y prediction. The y prediction being the predictions that have been made by the model that we've just created. Then it will do the same for classification report, accuracy recall, etc. And then it will print a blank space. I'll tell you why we need this blank space in a moment. The next thing I need to do is create a dictionary that will combine with this to create a new data frame that will just organize these things a little bit better. So I will just create a new data, uh, a new dictionary, call it R, and then it will take the model, the accuracy, the recall, etc., etc., all rounded up to two decimal places, and then I will append these results. These results. And then I will append this R, so giving me the model accuracy recall precision F1 score of each and every one of these models that I have created. This is great. If I run this now, there's a little bit of a uh, warning here, but no problem, ignore that. And now we can see what I meant. 
you can see model is logistic regression the confusion matrix is this meaning the uh, remember the true positives true negatives false positives and false negatives and this is the start and then we can have the classification report the, we can see the accuracy is 81 percent here and this final one that we have here this final one was just helpful in giving each and every one accuracy the accuracy the precision the f1 score and the recall for that specific model logistic regression model then when we move down you can see the decision tree and its values you can see the random forest and its values and you can also see the k nearest neighbor and its values and finally you can see the support vector classifier and its values there's a problem here with having 000, zero, zero but this is because it made zero predictions here and zero correct predictions here and this can be corrected in a number of a number of ways but we'll not concentrate on that for now because this the problem of zero division and this zero division you can set it as false and see how it works or set it as a certain number but when we move past this we now want to create a simple way where we can say the best accuracy model was this the best precision model was this the best recall model was this the best f1 model was this given the values for each and every one of them so how to do that is just we're going to use the index max to do this and the index max to work these values themselves are not in float form per se so we'll have to convert them to float then use the index max and then print these things out i'll do this really quickly because this is just another step just make sure you know which models are are good and which ones are not so the first thing we need to do is convert these results the accuracy precision and f1 score to floats and you remember we we did the same thing up there so we'll just come add it here and now we have converted them to floats and then the next thing we want to do is just come and take all of them and find the index marks for all of them run this and once we have the index marks we'll just use the print function to create a formatted string here very quickly or we can just put it directly we can just paste it here and you can say the best accuracy model will be the result of this max accuracy up here and when we run this we have seen already seen this but when we go to the end here let me just finish up we can see the best accuracy model was logistic regression the best precision model was logistic regression recall logistic regression and best f1 model was logistic regression so for this specific chan prediction model the logistic regression seems to be the best for that however remember we've not done any grid search we've done not done any parameter hyper tuning these are things that you can do it for yourselves and try and see how you can make each and every one of these models to become a little bit better and rerun this to find out which one is the best but for this simple one you can see with logistic regression having an accuracy of 81 percent a precision of 69 percent a recall of 55 percent and an f1 score of 61 percent it was the best model in each of these categories so we can choose a logistic regression for this you can go further and do more uh, more feature engineering do more uh, exploratory data analysis do more uh, parameter hyper tuning to see how you can work with this to increase the accuracy or the f1 score because you can see the recall is very low here find out how you can do this uh, this you can also uh, realize that the number of churn is way more than the number of of uh, not churning or the other way around so you can see how you can balance this out to create better results and with that thank you very much for watching this video i hope it was informative see you in the next one peace